So, this, and, and this is the crux of what it comes down to. Where is the land of the wandering? We have to, by virtue of the fact, what did the Lord say? He said, now turn and go into Next the slide. desert by the way of the Red Sea. Next slide. Yeah, at the top, what we're seeing is the uh, scripture where it says, now turn and go into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And we're looking at the location of Midian up in the top left corner of the Arabian Peninsula. And then what we have is an idea that they traveled south into southern Arabia and that the great and ter terrible wilderness that we see is actually <laughs> what they call, the Arabians call the Rub Akali. Now there's some uh, interesting information coming out about the name places in some of these uh, southern Arabian areas. And the Rub Akali, as pointed out by Dr. Leonard Moeller, also may mean Reuben the Chaldean. So we see in the Great and Terrible Wilderness evidence of the name of Reuben as well as some yep. other tribe names, the tribe of Gad and Manasseh in that region. It's, it's very interesting research. And, and back in one of those Rollins, you saw all those artifacts and that, that land where it's nothing but sand as far as the eye can see. We are truly there talking about a great and terrible wilderness. And if you don't have water and if you don't have the manna, you die. Mm -hmm. And all of those artifacts are coming out of that deep desert region. So who was it that was down there? Who wandered all the way down there? Why are there such serious and very ancient, not from the time of the Babylonian exile or the overruns of Rome, why are there thousands of years old Jewish settlements in Yemen? They've been there a lot longer than the dispersions. Mm -hmm. So where, where, where did that originate? One of the things that uh, is closely being followed, besides the fact that we've got the evidence of the footprints, this language that's written on these rocks that the menorah uh, testifies to, shall we say, uh, also follows this pathway all the way down the Arabian Peninsula and over into the uh, southeastern areas of Arabia. Why is this language being written on the rocks all the way down? You know what the Lord's command was? He said, I'm giving you this here mm -hmm. at Sinai. You teach it to your children. You write it on your doorposts. Mm -hmm. You write it. You mm -hmm. teach them this is the covenant. You teach them these things. And mm -hmm. this language gets more and more prolific on the rocks the farther south you go. Really? So we have this amazing story of the alphabet going down the peninsula and getting more and more refined as it does and looking more and more like proto-Hebraic. Then this very thing right here, every place where on the soles of the uh, where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Go to the next slide. The next slide. There we go. Look where the footprint go. Oh. There is evidence that the footprints, they've been seen in deep South Arabia. They've been seen in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia. They've been seen up and around the curve of Arabia to the north along the Euphrates, and they've been seen all over the land of Midian. So do, are we having a picture that's beginning to form here of where the wandering in the wilderness really took place? The great and terrible wilderness? Let me assure you, we've crisscrossed Saudi Arabia time and time again, and it is a great and terrible wilderness. And you could easily lose a million plus people in this vast continent mm -hmm. for the length of time the scripture says mm -hmm. that they will. But this is one of the most profound things ever. And I tell you what, we have to credit Dr. Leonard Moeller for coming up with some things that, that are just astonishing. They really are. When we first began to speak with him in early 2000s about we, Jim and I just are, are determined because of what we've seen. The whole of the Arabian Peninsula is where the wandering in the wilderness took place. Because you see, when you get the mountain in the right place, then everything else opens up to you. Mm -hmm. So we were telling him about these things, and I think he thought we were insane at the beginning. But he is, uh, he is quite uh, an extensive research scientist. And you know, he's not going to go out on a whim just because Jim and I think something might be. Mm -hmm. um, he went home and did a great amount of study. He happens to have some very ancient maps, uh, particularly one that was in French. And let's see, which was the number of that, um, that slide? Same slide, back up. Um, we'll pull that back up here, and I'll show you some of the things that he has found. Um, over in the right-hand side, you'll see people de Gade. That in French is the people of Gad, 
Why is this ancient French map have the people of Gad locating it in what is now current day Oman? And if you look just a little bit north of that, there's something profound. You'll see a green star that says Asher. Well, guess where that Asher is? That's where we lived in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia, and really? that's where the major oil fields are. What does the book dip say? In the toe dip of your Asher. toe. Asher <laughs> shall Asher. dip Asher. his foot in oil. It's the blessing of Jacob upon oh his sons. My what is Asher doing? But of course, in modern day maps, you don't find any of this. Oh, absolutely. And it, not. Dr. Moeller is the one who found these. This is where he found what if Rub, Rub al Khali in Arabic means the empty quarter. But how closely does this sound to Reuben the Chaldean, Reub the Calais, Reub the Calais? What and, and who took their inheritance in the wilderness? Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. Why do we find on an ancient French map Gad and Reuben? Highly possible. But but the mind blower was this: down at the tip of the uh, Red Sea, down there, you'll mm -hmm. see in the bottom mm -hmm. central, Ras Israel. Uh -huh. Head of Israel, uh -huh. down there located in what is now Lim uh, Yemen. Yemen. Why would, who in their right mind in current day would name something Ras Israel? Arabic Ras is the same as Hebrew Rosh, head of, beginning of. What is a something called the beginning of Israel or the head of Israel doing all the way down in Yemen? And why don't you find it on any current maps? Something is going on here. History rewritten, huh? Something right. is going on here. And yeah, one of the other things about that map was that uh, all of the red stars that you see, and there were many, are things that in our research we have collected together as possible matches to biblical sites. Mm -hmm. Other people have gone out and said, yes, uh, Uber is in Arabia, um, Gerar, some of these other cities, mm -hmm. they've identified them. The archaeologists have said they're possible sites. So all of those are marked on there as well. And you can bring that slide back up just one more time. But I wanted to point out that uh, where the blue stars are, you see, are around the mountain. And, and mm -hmm. back at when Emmanuel Anadi was put together his identity kit, he said, this is what you should find. 28 of those stars are piled up on top of each other as things that we have seen about the mountain in character, artifacts, mm -hmm. all the other information. 28 of those things piled up together as possible mm -hmm. matches to the Bible. We believe very closely in, in that they are our exact masses, but again, we have to leave it for interpretation. So that's an overview of what we think um, this m moving Mount Sinai into the Arabian Peninsula, what this does and how it explodes this idea of a wandering in the wilderness and a march straight north mm -hmm. from Sinai because they're not captured by the Gulf of Aqaba anymore, forced north, now they're free to go in any direction, north, east, and south. And south mm -hmm. is the direction we believe they went into. Where does a rock of Mecca come into this? It has to play something in there. We do a presentation yeah. where we, um, we go from all of these things, there's so much information here. And when we, when we get into this section, that comes up, but I would dare not give it away in this... <laughs> <laughs> we have such a short space of time, time right. to get to but, it and, and really develop Jewish that idea. really said something about that. But you see yeah. it, yes. Yeah. And, and you see that is where, uh, yeah, we have a connection, and you a know, real I, close connection. Yeah, and, and our dear friend Avi Lipkin, who and was, who was here with that, you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Avi, Avi was the one. When, this is why we, we had quite a night that night that, that we spent. Uh, Avi was staying at our home with us, and uh, we kept explaining to him, Jim has some very strong evidence of, of just how and where that whole box, the, the that Kaaba. whole building, the Kaaba, the origin has of Kaaba. very, very close ties, we he do believe. He must have been there this spring because he came here with this in his mind. He did. He was okay. with us like in March or so, and it yeah. was shortly thereafter he was here on this program. Said we had re-energized his fervor yeah. about this idea because he had this in seminary years ago yeah. when he was studying, and he had a thought about it, 
But when we presented our material and I showed him some of the things that we believe, he just, uh, it just it really fired to him. him up. He believes very strongly, and, and I know he shared this with you, that the phylacteries, which are perfect little black boxes, they are a, a perfect copy of the covered the building there, the Kaaba. So there is a very strong connection to the wandering in the wilderness and that very thing. Oh, but we're, we're going to have to leave that for another time. Uh, but, off air, we can have yeah, a discussion yeah. about <laughs> But it all comes down, it's all coming to a head. Yes, it is. It is. This is being revealed in this day and age for, for just That's time. exactly <laughs> right. And you know what? This opens up a mass amount of possibilities. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw out a couple of these. Because in our hearts and minds, we're sure of it. What happened to Paul on the road to Damascus? The yeah. Lord appeared to blinding him. Blinding revelation. He had a blinding revelation. And it says shortly after their very amazing thing, after he received his sight, he didn't go up to Jerusalem or to them that were before, but the Spirit drove him where? Into Arabia. You want to you guess where we think he went? Where? He went well, straight to Mount Sinai. Yes. And look at the correlation between Hagar and Sarah, mm -hmm. between... Zion and Sinai, between a mountain you can't touch and a mountain that the grace of God has fallen on. Why that great student of Gamaliel, where would he go? Why would the Spirit drive him directly into Arabia? Because, you know, I think he wrote the whole book of Galatians from the cave. You know, that cave up there that's quite possibly Elijah's cave. Mm -hmm. Because he had such a beautiful understanding of the two covenants, of, of the, the, well, you can say it in that manner, but you can, everything that he wrote, this Hagar is Sinai in Arabia. If the Spirit drove him into Arabia and gave him such understanding of how everything fit, surely that's where he went. And I'll tell you another one. What about Elijah? What about, about Elijah? First Kings 19, it says, you know, it was just after uh, Carmel, the Carmel incident, <laughs> where he called down fire on the prophets of Baal. And he runs, uh, well, first off, he goes and hides under a tree and wants to die. And, and <laughs> no, that's not what the plan was. So 40 days and 40 nights later, he's fasting in the strength of the two cakes mm -hmm. and goes to Horeb, mountain of God. Oh, wow. And goes into a cave. Mm -hmm. And we think we know right where the cave is. We showed it to you earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, who else was at that mountain? Moses. Moses was at that mountain. Elijah was at that mountain. What about when Jesus took Peter, James, and John to a high mountain far apart and he was transfigured before them? Wow. Who appeared? Moses and Elijah. Elijah. And Elijah. <laughs> yeah. You know, he said, I came to fulfill the law. Yeah. What if he really stood there where it was given? What if Mount Sinai is the Mount of Transfiguration? Why not? Doesn't it make sense? Mm. It does. Yeah. It, it, makes, it makes sense. And I'll tell you another one that's a really, that's a mind-boggling thought. And you know, all of this is open to complete interpretation sure, and debate, sure. and we could be completely wrong in all of this, but it's things that we do ponder. What about Jacob? Jacob has this marvelous encounter where he sees a ladder. He sees a stairway. You know, he, he goes to sleep and he dreams and he sees the angels of God ascending and descending mm -hmm. upon this staircase. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, he says, whoa, this is none other than the gate of heaven mm -hmm. and the house of God. Mm -hmm. And he called it Beit El, mm -hmm. the house of God. But the name of that place before was Luz. What? Luz. Luz. Jebel Luz, this mountain. It doesn't say Jebel Luz, yeah. but it Jebel says the name of that place before was Luz or Laws. What is this mountain's name in Arabia? Laws. What happened? You know, when God descended in fire on that mountain, 
you can call it the portal of heaven because he took oh, Moses absolutely. up there and he showed him the pattern. He mm -hmm. showed him the heavenly pattern. There was absolutely a corridor, a portal, whatever you want to say, there for God to come down and for Moses to see the heavenly mm -hmm. ark and the heavenly menorah mm -hmm. and the, such as that. Jacob had an encounter at a place that was once called Laws that he renamed Beit El, Bethel. Mm -hmm. He renamed it that because he said this, because there's a stairway, angels are coming up and down here. You know, in the Psalms it says, many myriads of angels accompanied God there at Sinai. They were moving up and down over yes. the mountain. Yes. What if these are the same places? What if?